<laughs> and then, yeah, you should because uh, you know there's that situation around the country demands that we have to a big man oh you be big man big man oh by, <laughs> by your government they power oh, hey, what did they talk so that makes me a big man yes I hear you. Are you well, are you denying to, the no good morning to the honest yeah good morning good morning <laughs> and we, we have the Shegu Vera like posturing <laughs> Bernard Bona uh, former <laughs> national <laughs> chair for the PNC Mr Shegu Vera Bernard Bona how are you I could have been better you could have been better <laughs> we haven't started the conversation you I wait could have been better. a member of parliament <laughs> no, he prefers you know and, and then and then the fact that when you described his status. He laughed it off and said he can't believe that in this worst economic times you can no, describe No, I never him. said that. Why do you want yeah. to go by that? Yeah, I think you're putting words into his mouth. And, and, and I was here. You so mean we are inferences monitoring. are not permissible any longer? Well, they are, but they have to be factual inferences. Yeah, but this is factual. The man could not believe That's your own description. That yeah. In this economic time, you, you drew a conclusion that he's not happy with, or he has not drawn this himself. This man's party is in power. But as you can see, he's in opposition. <laughs> <laughs> the guy looks good. I just described his skin. Look at his skin tone. Clear on bra. All the all the sound when you see. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> Proclare. Uh, uh. Well, we, we have a member of parliament. Um, this is the second time he's fighting from two geographical areas, but current member of parliament for Tamale Central, a very good friend of mine. I've known him way back when he was uh, one of the key uh, coordinators with uh, the National Youth em Employment Program, but now risen through the ranks to become member of parliament. And then a second time for the people of Tamale Central, uh, Ibrahim Mutala. The first name is Mohammed. Eh? It's Murshala Mohammed. Mutala Mohammed. But Ibrahim is my son. Inshallah. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have some great uh, conversations this morning. But uh, let me just uh, pick uh, something from Johnny's bad as well. And all of us had the information by the latter part of the evening. And the information kept trickling in that apparently um, at the senior high school level, we have situations where uh, they're still not getting enough uh, feeding. But let, let me be fair to the official government uh, spokesperson, Mr. Mr. Kumi, do as the honest. Party spokesperson, what? not government spokesperson. He's a party spokesperson. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's happening? What, what, why is I, told you he's I, I thought the minister said everything has been resolved in relation to feeding at the senior high school level. Well, um, good morning to Ghanaians once again. But as you put it, this is an information that can, came in last night. You mean night. you're not aware? Oh, not to say I'm not aware. But previously, the so minister, you are aware. Yeah, yeah, this morning I've gotten by the news, and um, as you rightly put it, previously when the news came in, the minister made us aware that um, the right arrangements has been made. I think initially it was an issue of money, that the money that they were owed to the buffer stock company, and that was causing difficulty with the schools as well. But then the last time we were briefed by the minister, according to the minister, arrangements has been made in such a way that. Uh, every month or two weeks ahead, that provision is made to the secondary schools for them to be able to feed them. As to what is accounting for the current situation, I am not in a good position to tell. But uh, these are all some of the teaching problems that comes to running a particular administration or a policy. And be it as it may, we expect that once the minister is in control, once the various agencies responsible for education are in control, we expect this to be addressed. They clearly are not in control because I do have information that a number of the schools in the Northern Belt have been suffering from this, just haven't gone public for the last couple of weeks, if not months. But it also means that we need to be decisive about the actions that we take. And it has to be not only coming from the ministry, but also uh, from the Ministry of Finance as well. Yeah, but that's why I'm saying that once we're briefed, we're made known that arrangements were in place for supplies to be made to the various secondary schools to enable them to provide the feeding to the students. As to whatever that has changed now, whether it is shortage of food, whether it's still the financial difficulty that was um, being experienced previously. At this moment, I cannot tell. But I'm saying that once the minister is in charge, it is expected that whatever be the problem, he will diagnose it and go deep into it and find lasting solutions to it. But be it as it may, you can never run um, 
an educational policy or even an, any administrative policy which will not encounter which problems. will not encounter problems but these so are, it is normal to encounter problems. oh it is normal to encounter problems but that is the reason why people are paid to do what they are supposed to do as well so they're supposed to think and solve our problems as well and i expect that once this is coming up the minister will rise up to the occasion and find lasting solutions to it the last time like i i, I said earlier it was financial challenge finance that they owe to the buffer stock company and according to the minister monies were released to them and it's been resolved whatever that is accounting for the current challenge that we have at hand cannot be told as we speak now but foreseeably we know the minister will come to their rescue and they'll find lasting solutions to these problems for instance if you look at the importance of this policy i don't i do not think um, the government will negligently leave our students to suffer especially where this morning, we are being told almost by all the newspapers that President Akufado is saying we need to prioritize education. And I believe that right from the beginning of the administration of President Akufado, he has determined and purported in his heart to make sure that mm -hmm. education becomes a priority to us as a people. And therefore, even if all our monies will go into education, that's what he said. And he's committed to that statement. And we can all see, other than that, within his first term of um, administration and even to be precise, the first year of his administration, he wouldn't have committed that kind of amount to it. As we all know, usually political promises when given, mostly people will wait till their last term of the administration before they decide to implement it. But because he's committed to it, mm. he made sure that in the first year of his first administration, he committed a lot of resources to it to be able to implement <coughs> the free SHS. And what, he will never leave it. Oh, I, I get the point that Mr. Kumi is making, but you're a member of parliament and you don't know what the teething issues are. The reality is that it's a good policy, but all concerns either being raised from the other side of the political divide, neutrals, and even those in education or academia about how we need to restructure the funding of the free SHS policy. And the whole educational sector has just fallen on deaf ears and could be one of the long-standing issues that have bedeviled the sector. Good morning. Doesn't surprise you, does it? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Big Man, if I can borrow your description. Of well, he's, he says he's just a normal man. Good morning to this village boy seated by my left, and good morning to your viewing public, and most importantly, the good people of Tamale Central. The buffer stock is financially distressed, yet the managers of the buffer stock, they are not. Tomorrow is pregnant. Those who manage it. What do you mean by that? Well, I say tomorrow is pregnant. Because as far as we're concerned, the yes, minister did tomorrow, say that over 60 million or so had been released. That, tomorrow that was around you. Tomorrow is pregnant. And a word spoken in silence would get to its intended ear. Look, nobody has ever said that free education is not good. As a matter of fact, our constitution enjoins us to ensure education is free. If you read Article 25, I think it was 1D, right? Article 25 says that edu education should be progressively free. And our student leaders, and Bernard can testify to this, that was our you know, mantra, that education should be made free. Of course, we were smart enough not to proceed with the other aspects of the provision which says that on condition that government can afford. So the reason why we have FQ is in sync with the same constitutional provision, that education is free, free compulsory basic education. So there is no denying the fact that free education would have been a very good policy. The difference is that it is recklessly and haphazardly implemented what, what, against all experts' advice. What do, you, what do you mean by recklessly? All Because all it's, civil it's a policy for which we've uh, had the Minister of Finance and even Education come before you as parliamentarians to itemize sections of the policy how it As a matter be of fact, we had nothing to do with the policy. The policy was a policy formulated by the executive. I understand. Arm. I'm talking about and, and um, funding approvals, etc. I'll, 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 I'll come. I'll come to that. Yeah. This is a policy. In fact, the first time we heard of free SHS from Nanado, President Nanado, was in 2008. The infamous interview he had, I think, it was Al Jazeera, with with. A journalist at Al Jazeera, and then when they asked him about education, he said he was about the free education. He said yes, it was going to be free. They demanded to know the cost 
involved in ensuring that it is free. The okay, that was, uh, was that, 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 that was a BBC, BBC interview with Shaka, uh, Shaka Sali, No, right. no, Mr. Saka. Saka. Yes. Okay, good. So he could not provide even the answer. One would presume that, oh. That was so around. Um, in 2008. After, after, 2000, no, 2000, after 2000. No, That was around, around 2012. 2012. That I'm, interview, I'm, that I'm, famous one that has been going on. But I'm saying that 2008. That was when he first that outdoor. That, that's what that I'm idea, saying. That idea, yes. From 2008, 2012. Yes. He could not even tell him the course. And I remember I was on a TV program with the then director for communication, Honorable uh, uh, the former minister for information, Nana Kumia, yeah. on News file. And I demanded to know. He could not even provide a cost at the heat of the campaign in 2012. So I'm saying that it was it's a program that was not well thought through. Every single civil society organization with the expertise in education opposed the attempt to introduce it in a manner that it has been introduced. Every single civil society organization, including aspects. It was not just NBC that opposed the way it was going to be implemented. People within the same government, some of whom are ministers today, publicly had problems with the way the free SHS was implemented. Yet this president and this government refused and went ahead to do what they did. And that is the reason why we are having the challenges we are having. Look, I had the Minister for Finance, who said on one of the <coughs> TV programs that he thinks that there's a problem with the free SHS. And he, he said and it was his personal opinion. I'm saying that there were many people. In fact, I'm, the, I'm, the saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying he said it was his president, personal opinion. President Kufo, a personal opinion, a member of cabinet, is it that he raised the issue at cabinet? He's not entitled to his personal I'm say, opinion. Oh, I'm saying that did he raise the issue at cabinet that he wasn't listening to? Someone who is clothed with the capacity to manage the finances of this country. There is no one better place to appreciate what we can do as far as financing programs are concerned in this country, than the Minister for Finance. You had Adukufo, who also spoke extensively about the need for us to take a second look at it. President Mahama said that there was the need for the program to be re-looked at. President Mahama never said anywhere that he was scrap free HHS. They went to town, including my good friend, the Minister for Information, that President Mahama saying a review means cancellation. Even when President Mahama on that same program said, look, I, when I say review, I don't mean cancellation, but we need to look at it. Thank God that they are now coming to terms with the fact that we need to review this. I'll tell you one thing. There is one easiest way of assessing to, or determining to know parents who can afford and those who cannot afford. Now, wh which way is that? I'll tell you. If a parent, a student attended private school, primary, GHS, and get to SSS, such a student parent can pay there are some private schools. Look, and I won't sit here and pretend. The monies we paid, or we pay for the education of our kids at the private schools, particularly primary and GHS, are huge and monumental. Now, someone who can afford will take care of his kids' education from primary to GHS, get to secondary school, and the state says, don't pay. At the expense of quality education. Education is not just euphoria that it is free. We should be concerned about the quality. Because if the quality is lacked, certainly the human resource base of the country is going to be affected. That is one way. Two, there are pa parents who will be willing to pay for their worst education at the secondary schools. There are some parents who will be willing to pay. Now, why wouldn't this government do that? How can you make it free so that you can increase the number of people who will go to secondary schools at the expense of quality? As a teacher, in fact, a trained teacher at that, quality education is not just making it available to everybody. But ensuring that it is not only available, but the quality is provided. Conditions under which teachers are teaching students, conditions under which pupils are taught, the teaching and learning materials are available. We don't even have textbooks. Well, the government says it's trying. I'm trying They what? just released over yet 60 spend, million yet to offset some of these supplies of food at the FSHS level it's about ridiculous. three months ago. Yet they spent millions of you're dollars. You're not satisfied. Yet they spent millions. Tell her, you're not satisfied. I'm saying that they spent millions. In, in, in buying, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, uh, past questions. When you don't have the textbooks with which the students can be taught, yet you spend so much money in buying past questions. Approved it's by you, the members of parliament. Who approved it? Members of parliament. Which members of parliament approved it? Members of parliament. No. Um, Mr. Mr. Munaz, uh, I, I just give you only two minutes because we have to onwardly go on to a bigger conversation uh, because uh, Kumasi is becoming hot. Uh, they're also feeling the pinch. 
and we're talking about big business, commerce people feeling the pinch on the depreciation of the city against the major international trading currencies. But is it a time that now we need to hasten on the decision to have a bigger national conversation about how we're funding this? Because we have to be realistic <coughs> about the medium to long-term sustainability of, of, this, of this program. The issue that Johnny raised this morning has to do with the non-availability of food in many senior high schools within our country. And I just feel so sad, particularly for some parents who will suffer the closure of these schools as a result of lack of food. Because if you come from Sankana, Pasengpe, Pagdinge, Pekpra, and you have very little money, and your award happens to be in Avetime, or the other school that was mentioned, and all of a sudden they say that, look, we want to seek your approval because from next week onwards, we will run out of every supplies. And therefore, the students should feed themselves. Given the kind of turmoil we are in at this particular time, how many parents? When you say turmoil, what do you say turmoil? There is food shortage within the country. There is economic crisis in... What did you... What did you there's no official... Um, indications from all the relevant institutions that the food shortage. We may have uh, constraints as far as prices are related, but that does not indicate that we have... I don't know where you come from, but if you come from the same country that I come from, you will appreciate that there is food shortage. And because there is food shortage, one of the predominant... You mean prices of food have gone up? I'm saying that there is food sh shortage. And because there is food shortage, it will become one of the determinants for which prices will have to go up. Maize is short in supply. I understand the economic metrics you're using. No, maize is short in okay. supply. So because, my, because I'm a farmer and I know that maize is short in supply. I have, I have friends who farm too. I'm, well, and I'm one of your friends and I'm here and I'm telling you that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I asked a question about, is it now time I'm for us that, to moot the... I'm saying that to, there is to, food to, to start a bigger conversation no. nationally I, on I just finance. wanted to close on that. There is food shortage. Anybody who understands domestic rice is not in supply. And therefore... I am worried. I'm looking at the picture, particularly from where I come from. <laughs> that if you say, okay, some parents will be able to give their words money to feed. What about some parents who come from my background? How are they going to provide money or feeding for their children? So invariably, you are asking their words to come home. At the time, their colleagues will be in school and learning. And if you know, SHS1 students are coming home now. SHS2 students are supposed to go under the traffic light educational system that we have imposed on ourselves. And so it gives a lot of pressure to parents. And so all that I want to say is that, look, this is a terrible thing President Akufado has simply destroyed our educational setup say free SHS, and you turn around and nothing is free about it. They say review, and then you took a political part of it and say review means cancellation. Today, you are coming to talk about review, and your review is not cancellation. Yes, it's time for us to look at the bigger picture. It's time for us to take steps to reorder even the kind of ed educational stru structure that we have whether this kind of educational system is what we still need in the 21st century to be able to move forward. We need to look at all those things. But it doesn't take just one political party to go and sit at some corner or one individual to go and make a pronouncement. And when you are privileged by citizens' vote, you come and implement what you dreamt in your bedroom. <laughs> that is what is happening to us. Because there was no broad consultation on this matter. And when people... But it doesn't mean the policy was conceived in the bedroom. Okay. It was conceived in the market. It was conceived internally within the party. It because was not. Because the party... Because if it the party, was, if the party, it was, the party if it was, if it was, the party members themselves would not have been calling that, look, we should look at this thing we are coming to do. No. 
President Kufo is not a party member. Ado Kufo is not a party member. Uh, Ken Oforata is not a party member. Anyway, they say he's not a party member. But he's of government. Personal decisions. Personal opinion. So he took the decision. President Akufuado took the decision as an individual and just hanged it on us all. And there we are. And it is not just this one. You know the decision of the National, Ca National Cathedral uh, where he took the decision. The policy to implementation. Him. I'm saying that the implementation has having been. Having the so idea, getting it approved, when you getting you, the budget also sorted you know out. What? And then you, you know what? Or implement. When you go to the field to even do your research, Somebody has to do a review of the research. All right. And so when President Akufado goes to dream of an idea and brings it, this was just supposed to be a beginning. And doesn't want anybody the to main participate conversation in formulating. Wanted to have, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. but it will be unfair no, to the two of you. If you say anything, I will have the right to remember. No. no. But no. you have told you. All right. So